I am going to be doing a demonstration using Winsor & Newton pigment markers. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. This is my fourth time using Winsor & Newton pigment markers and I have just been learning so much. I love experimenting with something new. I decided to try something that has a lot of smooth blending with these clownfish. Now, just for transparency, Winsor & Newton did provide me with some of the markers in my set, but then I liked them so much I went out and bought a whole lot of new ones, so I'd say it's half and half of what they've supplied me with and half are stuff that I purchased myself. I am working on Yupo paper. If you've not already seen my review on the Winsor & Newton markers, well you should, there's a card that'll pop up here so you can check that out but you want to use a very specific type of paper for these markers to blend well and behave the way that you'll see them work in my video here so your two real options that I've seen are either the Yupo paper or the Winsor & Newton pigment marker paper again check out that video because I talk about why I like which paper and show you samples of both there I'll have links to all of the supplies I'm using in the video description for those of you who are supporters over on patreon the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now complete with voiceover so make sure to head over and check that out now we will move on to this tutorial we are going to go through the first part of this very quickly because you can watch this in real time on the live stream. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out if you do want to see the slower version of this. This is the fourth time of me working with these markers, so this entire project was, was largely just experimenting. Just trying different things, seeing what works, what didn't work. As you can see, I am blending things out with my fingers, and that's how I'm getting this really soft, smooth look. And the great thing is, if these markers start to dry and you didn't get a chance to blend something, it's no big deal. Add color on top of it, or even just the colorless blender on top of it, and it will reactivate it. These are light fast, but they're not permanent, which means while they're they're not going to fade when exposed to light under regular circumstances. I wouldn't put it directly in a sun, you know, where sun's actually hitting it, but they are going to lift off the paper and especially on paper like this where I'm using the UFO paper this paper you can lift right off of it it's a type of plastic and as I'm working you'll see me take a q-tip with a bit of water and I can lift some of that marker right off the paper to get highlights which is a really fun way to work with these it's very forgiving if I make mistakes I can just wipe that area off with a bit of water and try it again so here on this clownfish, I'm blending yellow, two shades of oranges, and I believe I will come through with a darker red as well to really brighten it up. By pulling some of these darker colors into it, it's going to make my lighter yellows and oranges appear that much brighter. So here, lining everything out with the black. Now, I did find it was definitely best to start with the orange and then put the black on once the orange and the white were finished. Otherwise, that black would easily smudge into the orange, which would create a bit of a muddy mess. So I waited for the black until I had everything else blocked in. Blending out the background here, again, using my fingers to smudge everything out. And like I said, you can still see the real-time version of this. I know this is going faster than what's even usual for my speed paintings. So going through here now and adding shadows in between some of these cor bits of coral. Now I found that trying to shade in between, I didn't get very smooth results. You can see it's very sketchy looking. I mean, they're markers. So what I found to be best is to blend everything, get the dark where I wanted it, as dark as I wanted the deepest shadows, and then come through with that Q-tip and lighten up areas as needed. That seemed to be a much better way to go than to try to work in between like I would with maybe colored pencil. So you can see I've got everything dark and I will come through and add my highlights on top of that. And what I'm doing with that Q-tip is essentially erasing marker from the paper. Just by adding a bit of water to it, I'm able to lift a lot of that off. So go ahead and block these guys in just to mark my place here. And because I am experimenting with this, like I said, very new medium for me, I'm going to be going back over each area what seemed like a million times. Okay, maybe it wasn't quite that many, but I'll keep going back and forth over it as I try different things to see, okay, does it look better if I blend it this way? What if I blend it that way? It's largely experimentation, and I strongly recommend if you are new to any medium, don't be too worried about everything being perfect right off the bat. Experiment. Try different things. That way, later on, when you're working on a project that you're going to be more serious about, spend a lot more time with, you're already going to know what those mistakes were and how to avoid them. You're going to know how to blend things out. You're going to know a lot of these things, so be willing on your first few projects when you're new to a medium get those mistakes out of the way now try different things to see what works and what you don't like your first project doesn't have to be the best thing that you've ever completed or in this case this is my fourth project and the same thing it does not have to be the best thing that I've ever made I just need to experiment with it so you can see here I'm taking that bold red and look at how nice that blends into the oranges and the yellows it makes the yellows and oranges seem that much brighter 
just by putting something dark right next to it like this. And I'm smudging that out into what's around it. As you can see, it reactivates what's next to it. So even though what was next to it, the oranges were and yellows were completely dry, it didn't matter. It'll still blend into it when they get wet again. And remember with this paper, you want to use one of two types of paper, either the Yupo paper, which is great, or the Winsor & Newton pigment marker paper, which I like. I just wish it wasn't only 20 pounds. It's just too lightweight for my taste, but it works very well. So I use that just to test things out on and to practice different things before I work on the more expensive Yupo paper. I really wish they would make that marker paper in a heavier weight because I do like the, the texture of it. It's very nice to work on. But you don't want to use regular paper with these markers because they're not going to blend like what you're seeing them do here. And for this guy, I'm doing the same thing I did on the previous goldfish where I've started with the yellows, then built up with my oranges going darker and darker as I went, and then up into the reds. Once those were on there, then I could come back through with the black. And it took a couple of layers of black for me to get that as dark as I wanted to go. I'm doing some little dots around the eyes just to build up that detail. And here, there was, the, this medium is just so forgiving, I love this. Okay, on that fin, I screwed up the fin on the bottom section, I made it too big. It was no big deal, I just wet the area, took another marker, reactivated the area next to it, and basically erased the portion of the fin I didn't want there anymore. If you want a medium that is very forgiving, that you can fix mistakes and go back and forth on again and again and again, this one is great for that. One thing that I found as I worked through this, initially I was going through Q-tips so fast. Eventually I realized you could just rinse the Q-tips off in the water well that you have next to you and keep reusing the same one to make them go a lot longer or a lot further. I've tried a few different brushes for blending these. So far my favorites are some of the e.l.f. makeup brushes. I got them at... Old Navy of all places, they were up by the register and they worked really well. Just, I got a variety to try out with these, but for the most part, my fingers work the best for blending. The only time that they're, my fingers aren't as great is on smaller areas, in which case the brushes seem to work better. But I'm still experimenting, so I still keep trying both ways. Here, I'm coming through in between and starting to better define some of these anemones. Later on, I found it was much easier and looks better to do that work that I'm doing here with colored pencil. My Caran d'Ache Luminance worked so well on this paper over the marker. I tried Polychromos and I tried Prismacolor and I didn't really like the results I got with either of those. The Luminance are just the absolute perfect texture to go on this paper over these markers. And you will see that later in the video. One thing that's really nice with these, if you don't have the full set, it's not a big deal, or I don't even have the full set. I have about 75 markers. Even if you have only 12 or 24 or whatever set you have, you can blend so much and mix the colors that you have together to make new colors because these are so blendable. That's one thing that I found to be really, really nice with these. Of course, I get a bit obsessive when I like something and I think I need to own all the colors, so I did go and buy more, but I think you can get away with creating a lot of really cool pieces with just a few, a handful of colors. So don't feel like you can't try these out or get started unless you buy every color available. You really can. Another tip I have for you, if you are new to markers, make sure when you purchase these, if you purchase them in the store, open the both ends of the marker to make sure they're not damaged because when they're out on the sales floor, people mess these up like crazy. So double check those before you buy them. If you're buying them online like I am from Jerry's Artorama or Dick Blick, then you don't have to worry about it. They'll be fine. So here I want to come through and add highlights on these fish. So even though this, this section is completely dry, it doesn't matter. I can take the yellow and just work over that and smudge it into what's around. I just love how blendable these are. Little details there around the eye. And I just want to add a lot of shading. This isn't something where I want to say, okay, they're orange, they're clownfish. I'm just going to shade in the entire fish orange. They'll look very flat. It's really important to get a lot of shades in here, different values of yellows and different shades of oranges, and then the reds and even purples. I mix some of the purples into the darker red portions as well. And the same thing with the white. I don't want to leave those straight white. You can see I've got a lot of the purples and magentas mixed into that too. And anywhere that seems really rough and just like an absolute mess of brush marks, it's no big deal. I can come back through and blend that out. 
it's pretty hard to have a mistake that you can't fix with this medium. You can rework and rework it as often as you want. Of course, sometimes you'll rework it and make something that looked great terrible and you have to redo it from scratch, but that's okay. You can do that with these, at least on this paper. Starting to use that Q-tip to pull out even more of the anemone around the, the clownfish. Now I did have a hard time getting some of the white dots or the white sections at the tips of the anemone bright enough on the coral up front, or I keep saying coral, the anemone up front. So what I will do is come back through with oranges and reds, darken some of the anemone and that will make the tips appear that much brighter. Well, even though I can lift a lot of this off the paper, it's still going to be stained a bit. I can lighten it, but it's not going to go back to completely white when I've had a lot of oranges and yellows on it already. So for those, just by darkening what's next to it, which is what you're seeing here, it will make the tips appear that much brighter. And I'm going to refine these lines quite a bit with colored pencil in just a moment. Here I'm taking my colorless blender and just blending some of these areas out. What it's basically doing is lifting some of the pigment off the paper and blending what's there into the pigment that's next to it, or at least that's how I'm using it here. This marker can be used in several different ways to blend, but on this, what I'm doing specifically here is to lift quite a bit off and to just kind of blend those little streaks that I'm doing into what is next to it. So it gives me a bit of a softer look. Coming through with the magenta for some of the body of the anemone. Now I didn't really like the results I was getting. I just really struggled with the body portion of the anemone. And that was one thing I was able to really easily fix with colored pencil later on. I still feel like I don't have full control of these, which is not surprising on my fourth time using them. So it was a really nice for me to come through with a colored pencil and be able to fix some stuff that I was struggling with here. And there is the colored pencil. And you can see, look how it softens everything out so nicely. I don't need to use any paint thinner or anything to blend this with. It's going to blend just on its own. This paper is so, so smooth. I'm not going to have the rough textured look that I would typically have without blending with those things. You can see again, darkening up these anemones, the arms that are up front, it makes the white dots, the white tips that much brighter. I came through with a little bit of white as well to brighten them up, but it still isn't white white. But by darkening up what's next to it, that was all I needed to really make those pop. This is definitely a medium. I'm having so much fun learning. I cannot recommend it enough if you just want something that you can do quickly. That's the other thing I love with this. You can get so much done so quickly with it, which for those of you who are used to colored pencil, that's not how we're used to working. So it's kind of nice to be able to do a quick little project like this, bright and colorful kind of that instant gratification of having something done right away. And of course you can take longer and have more detail, but it is nice because you can get so much coverage on that paper very quickly. This one I believe is an 11 by 14. I could be wrong on that. It's bigger than an eight by 10, I know that. But I was able to get such rich, deep, bright colors so quickly with that. And I think that this is something you're gonna see me do a lot more, the mixed media where I'm using part markers and part colored pencils because these worked so well together. I loved the results that I got. The polychromos I didn't like as much. They were just a little bit too translucent to go over these bright dark colors. And then the Prismacolor just wasn't sticking to the paper that well. Again, the luminance worked so, so perfect with these. Little bit of blue detailing on there and that will pretty much finish it up for this piece. Now, while this paper will work for colored pencil, I've known of artists to work on it. It's hard to get the pigment quite as dark as what I typically would like, just because you can't layer as much. There's not much for the pencil to grip to. So that's where I think it was really nice in combination with the markers that gave me this nice bold base layer. And then to come through with details on the colored pencil was a very, very fun way to work. So cannot wait to do that again. If you guys have been playing with the pigment markers at all, please tag me in your work. I would love to see what you've created. It doesn't typically get so cold here in Texas where I need to wear gloves and a hat, but the day that I'm recording this video, it's snowing. So I went to find all of my gloves and it turns out I can't find matches to anything. I've got a pink one, a blue one, gray one. At least all those were the same type of gloves, so I guess they sort of match that way. A black one with a cute bow on it. Another black one. Ivory one and one large fluffy sock. I apparently don't own a matching pair of 
any gloves. I don't even know how that happened. Hey, wow, you're still here. That must mean you like this video. If you did, I have five new videos every single week. This is 10, five, I can count, really. I'm just kidding, I can't count. Five new art videos every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any. I'm curious, how many of you artists prefer warm weather over cold weather? Let me know in the comments below.